Hello, in this video, we're going to be talking about mathematical proofs. I'm going to be answering a question that I received from a viewer here in the channel. His name is Brian, and the subject is, when is it okay to end a proof? I'm going to read the question and then do my best to answer it. If you have any advice for Brian, please leave a comment in the comment section below. People do read the comments, and so whenever you leave a good comment, it really helps people. There are some really, really good comments on this channel. I have read some great comments. So thank you, uh, those of you that have you know interesting comments. I love when people have stories about stuff. Um, it's awesome, so please keep leaving comments. I, I do read all of them, or I try to. Hey, Professor, I have a question that I'd like to hear your input on. When has a proof been proved? It asked, when is it appropriate to end a proof? Oh, yeah, I can definitely answer this. <laughs> I'm a CS student junior year, and as I've become more familiar with proofs via textbook readings in class, this question has remained. When writing proofs for homework assignments, I rarely feel confident when ending my proof. There always seems to be more to explain, even when reading my class textbook. I question how the authors end each proof. Is a concept proved because X mathematician says so, or are there conventions mathematicians follow? Historically, have there existed one accepted proofs that were later disproved? How do you personally decide to end a proof? I would love it if you were able to help me out with this one. Thank you for the amazing videos. It has reinvigorated my love for math and reading. I've been watching over the past few months. Best, Brian. What an awesome email. This is so exciting. Thank you, Brian, for sending this email because I, this is great. So mathematics is about two things, okay? It's about proof. And it's about discovery. Uh, I remember the person who said that uh, wrote a book that um, I have, and um, they passed away a long time ago. And that's what it says at the beginning of their book. And I remember reading that and thinking, yeah. So your question is a beautiful one because you're about to enter the world of mathematics, and that is amazing. I'm getting goosebumps. So in mathematics, you know, it's it's a subject. Okay, it's a subject that you learn. And it has these things called axioms. And everything in mathematics is built upon these you know, mystical things called axioms. It's really quite beautiful. Some people love to get into like, you know, like into the weeds and really like explore, you know, the piano axioms and just like the axiom of truth. There's people who love that stuff. Um, I'm indifferent. I think it's part of mathematics, and there's other parts of mathematics. Mathematics is vast, so but that's the main idea. So upon those axioms, you have, you know, other definitions and other, you know, theorems and propositions, and it's all built up and it's all proven in a very, very logical way. And so, yes, there is a way to properly end a proof. You know you're done with the proof because you're done with the proof. Um, the most common type of proof I like to call an if-then proof. You have like if P, then Q, where P and Q are statements. A statement is something that is either true or false. Okay. So to prove an if p then q statement, you assume p is true and then you show q is true. And every single step in your proof has to be 100% um, justified very, very carefully, right? There's no uh, place for ambiguity in, in your proofs. You know your proof is correct because you can look at it and you can go through every little piece of the proof and, and justify why it's correct. And then you know you're really there when you're looking at it and you're thinking, maybe I should have written assume or maybe I should have, you know, you, you start to get picky about your wording. That's how you know you know what you're doing. Um, I do have, actually here on the channel, I do have a ton of proof of videos. Uh, I have a lot of beginner proofs on set theory, on functions, on uh, real analysis, on abstract algebra, uh, a few on complex variables, not too many, I need more there, and a few on number theory. And then just general proofs, you know, involving relations and things like that. So I have a lot of good uh, beginner proofs. And uh, just check out my playlist or just go to YouTube and type in Math Sourcer Set Theory or Math Sourcer, um, you know, Function Proof, Injective Functions. You'll, you'll get stuff for Advanced Calculus, et cetera. So I've got over 7,000 videos, I think, on this channel now. So there's lots. And it takes time. One of the things you learn as a math major, okay, is learning to prove things. So like you go to college for four years, right? And you learn a bunch of mathematics, all kinds of really cool stuff. Some you might not like, some you might like. It's it's a big subject, right? So it's really big. And at the end, one of the things you learn is how to write proofs. So in my opinion, that's what you learn as a math major. You learn how to think and um, you learn how to write proofs. 
And I think that can help you. I think that can help you in life uh, dramatically. Um, knowing mathematics uh, is is huge, not just for the sake of mathematics, but I feel like it, it just helps you, you know. Um, so hopefully that answers your question. I would I would get a proof writing book. I actually have one here, um, right now with me. And so let me just let me just show it to you really quickly, uh, because I think it's a pretty good book. This is one that was recommended to me uh, by people here on the channel. Let me move my cool little wizard, which I set up for this video because. Uh, I love this thing. I got it. Uh, it was like less than twenty dollars from the eighties. Yeah, there's a bunch of them on the internet. I think these became popular when Dungeons and Dragons became popular. That's my theory. Anyways, proofs. I've got a proof writing book here. Let me just get it for you. It's right here. I just got a, a bit of a mess. And this is a proof writing book for beginners. Okay, so it's for beginners. It's not on this stack. If you're curious, it's over here. We just move all of these books. This is an interesting book too. I'll have to make a video about this. This is uh, a college algebra book for the armed forces. Yeah, people in the army learned math with that book. The education manuals, I think they were made post-World War II. There was a big push um, towards, I think there was a big push in the United States towards um, math. And I think this was true in the 70s. Someone told me that. I knew a guy who got his PhD in the 70s. He said that in the 70s, there was a big push for math, you know. I think post-war in the U.S., um, there was a big push for mathematics, a big math and science push. And so a lot of people got PhDs. A lot of, a lot of stuff was created and done, right? a lot of technological advancements. Um, so this book is a book on writing proofs. It's called Foundations of Higher Mathematics. It's by Fletcher and Patty. This was recommended to me um, by a few of the subscribers here. Some of the subscribers, I, I won't mention them by name, but... Um, they, you know, they've been on the channel um, for a while, and so a lot of times I was like, "Oh yeah, it's that same person," because a lot of times the same people comment, and I remember who it was, and so thank you for that. Yeah, thank you for that. Contradiction method of proof. So this gives you the methods of proof that you need, uh, and you can learn to write proofs. I don't know how expensive this book is. I'll, I'll leave a link in the description to this book in case you want to buy it. Um, there's other books. I'm not saying this is the best one, uh, but it's certainly a good one. And I collect math books and science books and other kinds of books. So it's one I have. I also like the book by Velman. Okay. I think that one is less expensive than this one. It's a soft cover. It's a smaller book, but you can lay in bed and read about, uh, you know, logic before you go to bed, or you can read about vacuous truths, you know, while you're eating your breakfast. Cause it's, it's a soft cover so you can take it with you. That's one of the pros of soft covers, by the way, is they're more uh, portable. Someone actually left a comment about that today. Uh, and I was like, that's a good comment. But yeah, so this is a great book. It's got relations and orders, functions, countable and uncountable sets, introduction to groups, numbers, the logic and language of groups, sets, mathematical induction, and combinatorial proofs. It has good examples. It shows you how to write proofs. It will take you a long time to learn to write proofs, okay? It's going to take you a long time. Um, a long time, right? And, and don't give up. Most people who um, start a math major and quit, it's because of the proofs, um, especially when you get to like uh, advanced calculus. However, if you make it to advanced calculus, like if you do well in your proof writing classes, um, you'll be all right. Advanced calculus is probably the hardest uh, proof-based math class a math major takes. So it's like if you make it through that, you've made it. You know, you'll, you've made it. Anyways, uh, hopefully that answers your question. So yes, uh, you do know when a proof is complete, you just follow the structure of proof writing, right? And um, you can get better at it. You can get better at it. Proofs are really fun. Proofs are, to me, it's like proofs are what math is about. Well, proof and discovery according to someone else. Um, for me, um, one of the things I personally like about math is writing the proofs, and I like well-written proofs when they're very well-written and very clean and very clear. Um, to me, there's something beautiful in that. that. That's probably one of the things I like most about mathematics. It's just how nice the logic flows together in some of these proofs, how well-written some of them are. They're just really clean. like what they make, They're clever and they make sense, right? So, And you see the motivation. Those are the best proofs. Anyways, if anyone else has any advice on proof writing for Brian, please leave a comment. And hopefully this video has helped someone. Until next time, good luck and take care.